Hi guys, so today I'll be showing you how to pump down a system properly if you're troubleshooting a leak. Uh, so in my case, I have a leak on my system. Uh, the compressor, what it was doing was um, uh, wasn't really cooling inside the house. So I came outside to check out on the unit and what it was doing was it was turning on and then turning off, turning on and turning off. So basically uh, every five seconds, the compressor would turn off automatically and then come back on. So uh, the first thing I did, of course, um, you know, they say sometimes it could be a run capacitor or something like that. So your run capacitor, I'm just going to show you real quick, is located right in this case right here. I already checked my capacitor. Um, the capacitance on mine is 80 plus 5 microfarads. So the 5 is basically for your fan and 80 is for your compressor. Uh, the blue wire is normally for the compressor. The brown is mainly for uh, your fan. And then these are two are the common, which is reference to the uh, one leg of your uh, power supply. So this is the actual contactor. And so in my case, uh, the contactor would pick up and it would drop out. There could be multiple different reasons. If your thermostat is uh, way too close to your air conditioning system, you know, that can trigger false reading. But uh, I already checked, you know, uh, in my case, I'm not getting any false reading. It's actually low on gas. And that's why I was turning on and off. So. To, for you to troubleshoot that, the best thing is to grab a set of gauges. So this is a yellow jacket and they make really good gauges. So I picked up one of these. Um, this is a quick charge. You don't really have to have it if you're checking uh, your uh, air condition for your pressures. Uh, this is mainly for the charging blue line, you know, which is the cold line. Uh, it's also called the suction line or the low pressure line and this is your high pressure line and I'll show you guys on the air conditioning system what, what exactly it is. So this is the line that gets really really cold. It's bigger in diameter and this is your suction line. So your compressor what it does it it only sucks. It does not push. So it's sucking the gas inside compressing it to liquid and the hot line is the basically the liquid line or the high pressure line basically for you to troubleshoot um you know you need to first check your pressures so with this um again doesn't really matter you don't really have to have one of these quick charges you know um what you can do is uh, make sure everything is nice and tight by hand now the back ports, you know, the yellow one, just make sure it's nice and tight. You're gonna remove this one. Now, I do have these. You don't really have to have them. I just like to have control if I'm doing something. But uh, you can just, if you just have this, you know, directly, you can just use that. But anyway, since I have both, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the high pressure line first. And I'm just gonna leave that on the bucket. So the high pressure line goes on to the skinny line. 10 line and guys one thing you want to make sure is make sure your valves are closed you know uh, clockwise and then clockwise so these are nice and tight closed all everything is nice and tight before you connect anything then as soon as you connect the gas comes in in my case I, I have a valve right here let me show you guys so I have a valve right here and the valve basically blocks it but if you don't have a valve you know you definitely want to make sure everything is nice and close all right it's nice and tight remove the low side remove the blue one from the back nice and tight so as you can see, there's no gas. But now let me tell you why you see zero. Because I have these valve. These valve right here. It's not letting the gas into the lines yet. As soon as I open it, you'll see it and you'll see the pressure rise. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And you'll see the pressure rise. So now you can see this is my pressure right now without the system being on. Now remember the pressure always stays on the high side you know when the pressure when the system is off so we'll see what the pressure is like when the system is on because that's what you're looking for mainly let me tell you a little bit about the gauges the pink one that you see inside is for 410a so in my system uh it takes 410a gas the green one is r22 so the green gauge right here is r22 
Now, in both 410A and R22, the representation of these numbers are the temperature. So this is, if you see, like, you know, 65, that's the 65 degrees, that's what it's called for. Same thing over here. The pink one is the temperature for R410A, and it says right there at the bottom, and the green one is for R22. Now, the outside on both gauges are the PSI, which is the pressure. So, as you can see, it's about 170, 180 degree, uh, PSI, sorry, uh, 180 PSI around here, and around here on the same side. So, with the system off, you'll see they both are gonna be pretty much the same, because the pressure is equalized. Now we're gonna get into the pump down process, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you guys what my pressure is like uh, with the system running, so you have an idea what it looks like. And you'll see what my pressure is dropping down. And you can see, keep dropping, keep dropping, and as soon as it reaches 30 on the pink level, it's already past the point of freezing, so my coil inside is gonna start freezing. So as you can see, my pressure is way too low. I'm gonna turn this off, because I don't want my compressor to go bad, you know? You don't wanna keep it running like that. So as you can see, it came all the way down to zero, so it's already telling me that, hey, there's hardly any freon, and whatever is in the system, you know, is gonna go in, and uh, it's already below the freezing point. Um, since it already passed a 30 degree mark, you know, which is uh, it's supposed to be above 32 degree. If this thing is anywhere below 32 degrees, you know, uh, it's, it's gonna be in the freezing zone, so inside coil is gonna start freezing. So that's another troubleshooting it, that you can do if your inside coil is freezing, you can look at this and it will give you uh, a clue that hey you're already at the 30 degree and that's why you're freezing inside so you need to add refrigerant uh, to bring that level up uh, but for us to pump down what you need to do is let me show you guys down is you're gonna this is your service valve you can open that and you can open that so the way we are gonna do the pump down is we're gonna run the system and we're gonna close down the liquid line and once we close down the liquid line basically since the compressor sucks it's gonna keep sucking the gas right from here inside so all that liquid is gonna transform into gas and come back and get sucked in right from here and we'll see our pressure drop so we'll see our pressure drop as soon as this pressure reaches zero um, as soon as we turn this you can see over high side pressure down to zero and then as soon as this one reaches zero I'm gonna let the contactor go so basically turn the power off and that's all I'm doing so you just keep track of this as soon as it reaches zero you just turn the power off and then you you can start cranking this down you close the valve and that's how the entire refrigerant gets trapped in in there now you may have a little bit left in there depending on how bad the leak is and all that stuff you know so with that we're gonna go ahead and uh, get ready okay so we're gonna force the contactor and run the compressor and we're gonna start closing this down and as you can see now it's closing so you can see the red gauge dropping down and you can see the blue gauge is also dropping down nice and tight so whatever is left over now it's down so now you can see my pressure is down to almost zero and this is how you pretty much pump it down you know it's good to have those uh, proper ratchet or something like this you know that will let you do it properly so here's still gonna be good but again right tool for the right job you know I'm just trying to get this done on a weekend where I can't really go purchase some tools so just wanted to share this uh, with you guys and all my system is pumped down and there's no refrigerant in the line and at this point I can uh, run a suction on these line now another thing you need to do is there is some refrigerant left in the line which is very little but you know uh, evacuate this using a proper system um, you're not supposed to release that in, into the atmosphere is bad you know so I'm gonna use my recovery machine um, and uh, recover whatever is left whatever the small amount left in there is just gonna save me time you can recover the entire refrigerant if you really want to 
but uh, it just takes a longer time, you know, so it's better to capture that into the compressor. And the little that I have left in there, I'm just gonna recover it and then run um, a suction test or a vacuum test on this line and see if my leak is on here or it's somewhere over here. So that's how you pretty much recover refrigerant uh, or restore refrigerant back in your compressor uh, with the pressure down to zero. And uh, right now it's holding pretty good. So um, that's it guys, you know, hopefully you like the video. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.